안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. Today we are going to talk about a magical HTML element that has been around for a long time but that not many of us know about or use. Thanks to this element, we can make our website load faster just by writing a few lines of code. That element is the picture element and if you use it well, it can do wonders for you. It is crazy to me that this element is not used more often. It is supported by all major browsers, so there is really no excuse for not using it. As you can guess, the picture element is used to display images in our website. I know what you're thinking. We already know how to put pictures on a website. All we have to do is use the image element. Well, that might be true. The image element is kind of old and the web and its users have evolved a lot. We now have devices of all sizes and kinds, users on Wi-Fi and mobile networks, some with fast and some with slow speeds. And we also have new and better image formats like WebP, JPEG XL and AVIF. What this means for us developers is that we have to optimize our websites as much as we can. We have to be mindful about screen sizes, browser support, file sizes, download speed and more. Having said this, if you don't use the picture element and you stick to the image element, there are still a couple of things that you can do to optimize the way your images load. So let's start from there. Let's say we have an image in our website and we want to optimize the way it loads. The first thing we can do is change how and when the image is loaded by the browser. We do this by setting the attribute loading to be lazy. What this does is it tells the browser that you do not want to load your image right away, but rather only when the user is actually going to see it. In this example, we can see how as the user scrolls on the network panel, the browser is fetching each image one by one instead of loading all of them at the same time. That is awesome! This way you only load the images that your user is actually going to see. You don't have to write any JavaScript to enable this feature. All you need to do is set the loading attribute to lazy and you are good to go. The browser will detect when the image is about to enter the screen of the user and will load it automatically without the user seeing a blank square or a loading image. Lazy loading can make your website load faster, but we must think about the picture sizes we are giving to our users. Even with lazy loading, if the images and their sizes are not optimized, the website will load slow. Thankfully, the image element allows us to choose when to show a high definition image to our users and when to show a smaller one so that we give our users only the images they need. This is by using the source set and the sizes attributes. Source set allows us to define different images to be loaded on different devices based on screen size, resolution or type of device. Using source set, we can load a smaller low resolution image on a mobile device with a small screen, but a larger high definition image on a desktop computer with a big screen. Source set makes your website load faster because it allows each device to load the most suitable image. On this example, we are using source set to tell the browser that we have an image called cat small.jpg that is 500 pixels wide, a cat medium.jpg that is 1000 pixels wide, and a cat large.jpg that is 2000 pixels wide. We are also using the source attribute which acts like a default in case the user is on a browser that does not support source set, which is almost never going to happen since source set is supported by 90% of all browsers. As you can see on the code, all we are doing is communicating to the browser that we have three different versions of the same image and stating their sizes. It is then the browser's job to choose which image to load. If the user is on a small screen on a mobile device, the browser will choose to load the smallest image. And if the user is on a desktop screen, the browser will load the biggest one. The image is also chosen depending on the pixel density of the screen, meaning that if the user is on a device with an HD the screen, like a Retina Display Apple computer, the browser might choose to load the highest resolution image so the user doesn't see a blurry one. To help the browser decide which image to load from the source set, we can use the sizes attribute. With the sizes attribute,
attribute, we can give the browser extra information about how the image will be displayed on different screen sizes. This is how it works. Here we are telling the browser that if the viewport width is 600 pixels or less, the image will display at 400 pixels wide. If the viewport is between 601 and 1200 pixels, the image will display at 800 pixels wide. And for viewports larger than 1200 pixels, the image will display at 1400 pixels wide. Then the browser uses this information along with the widths provided by the source set attribute to choose the most suitable image to load. As you can see, the image element is very powerful and it can help us optimize loading speed if we use it with the correct attributes. With the image element, we just give information to the browser and the browser is the one that makes the decision on which image to load. If Instead of that, you want to have all control and you want to be the one choosing which image to load and when. You can use the picture element. The picture element itself isn't exciting at all. What's exciting is what you put inside of it. Inside of the picture element, we can put many source elements. The browser will look at each one of the source elements and display the one that matches the conditions that you specify. Like in this example, here we have a picture element with two source elements inside of it. The first source tag points to the image cut vertical.jpg, which will be used when the device orientation is portrait. The media attribute orientation portrait specifies this condition. The second source tag points to the image cut horizontal.jpg, which will be used when the device orientation is landscape. This is specified by the media attribute orientation landscape. Finally, there is an image tag with the src attribute set to cut default.jpg. This acts as a fallback and will be used if neither of the conditions of the source tags are met or if the browser doesn't support the picture and source tags. On the media attribute of the source element, we can write any CSS media query we want. We could, for example, show a different image depending on the size of the screen of the user. We can show a different image based on dark mode or light mode. We can load images depending on the resolution of the screen. Remember, on the media attribute, you can write the media queries you would write on CSS. So you can show different images depending on screen height, or you could combine the media queries as well. Like here, where we are loading images depending on both the screen orientation and width of the device. We can also use the source element to load images depending on their file format. Like on this example, where the browser will try to load the JPEG XL image first. If it can support or find the format, it will attempt to load the WebP image next. If that also isn't supported, it will then try the AVIF image. If none of these formats are supported, supported or found, it will finally load the JPEG image as a fallback. JPEG Excel, WebP and AVIF are all fairly new image formats. JPEG Excel has better compression and is designed to replace JPEG, PNG and GIF although it's not supported by most browsers. WebP is developed by Google. It's fairly well supported and it's also designed to replace JPEG, PNG, and GIF. According to Google, the average WebP file size is 25 to 34% smaller compared to a JPEG file of equivalent quality. AVIF is derived from the AV1 video codec. In some tests, AVIF has been able to save 50% on file sizes compared to JPEG with similar perceptual quality. AVIF also supports animation, so it can replace GIFs, and it supports transparent images, which means it can replace PNGs. It is not as well supported as WebP, but it's getting there. And that's it for this video. You now know how to make your website faster and more responsive. You are now equipped to handle different screen sizes, network speeds, and file formats like a pro. So go ahead, experiment with these new tools and see the difference they make. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget that if you want to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many, many others for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. Hago, Hago, See you on the next one. Bye-bye.